many countries have a lot of plans, but the problem they have is those plans are not brought down to what I call three feet level. That means at the point it is ready for execution. What we've done in Malaysia is we made sure that our plans are supplemented by very concrete programs so that the implementers know exactly what to do. And so that makes things very easy for implementation for us. When I describe the three feet program, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that the details, implementations, the timeline and the budgetary requirements are all inside there. So what we're doing here is that we, that program is implemented continuously and we report it on a weekly basis what's done there. On the economic transformation program, we had said that three measures of true north. The first one is about gross national income. We want to become a high income nation. That means we fulfill the minimum required, which is 15,000 US dollars uh, per capita. And secondly, we also want to make sure there's enough investment to propel uh, that growth for the economy. And third, we need to create jobs. Those are the three measures which we regard as measures of true north when we succeed getting there. Now, on the first one, uh, we put very ambitious targets. Last year, we were supposed to grow something like 797 billion ringgit, and we surpassed it in one. The first year, we made 830 billion ringgit of gross national income, and that is a big number for us. And secondly, we were only expecting about 83 billion ringgit of private investment. And as we went through really uh, chasing the investors, both domestic investors as well as foreign investors, we actually managed to achieve 94 billion ringgit. That is ahead of our original target. And thirdly, we didn't quite meet the job targets. We were intending to create an additional 330,000 jobs. We came marginally short of that, which is uh, 313,000 jobs. That said, when I put it all together and I've referred to the three measures, we're very pleased with the progress so far because in a short period of time, I likened that to a, a vertical takeoff, if you, if you make the analogy to an aircraft. And so we, did too, we took very little time to get to where we wanted to because we got the private sector excited. We got the investors really convinced that the program that we are chasing for the economic transformation is doable. On the government transformation program, we made tremendous strides, the example being on, uh, on education. We increased the intake for preschool and we had the best result for our uh, primary school in four years. And on, on corruption, we have for the first time in our history introduced a Whistleblower Protection Act. And uh, we also now had introduced uh, many other measures such as the naming and shaming. There are all the people that are convicted of corruption in Malaysia, their names and photographs is on the world website. We want to name and shame them. We have integrity pacts, that means signed by corporations. And this, we work together with Transparency International to produce this. We're getting lots of companies in Malaysia, as well as government agencies to then sign these contracts. 132,000 integrity contracts have been signed in the course of a year on corruption. On thirdly, on, uh, on uh, rural infrastructure, we build the most kilometers of rural road since independence in the last two years, 1,700 kilometers of rural roads. The list is very long. To my mind, there are two things that we have to keep an eye on. The first one for our economic transformation and government transformation program, we must remain focused. Most countries suffer from excitement in the beginning, they lose focus, and eventually they then want to do everything under the sun. And that is panacea for disaster. Because we don't have an unlimited pot of gold here, you know. We have limited resources. So we must make sure that those money, our money and our focus must be put in areas where we're naturally endowed and we, as a country, can win in the global arena. The second one is about competitiveness. We have to create the conditions for competitiveness to flourish in Malaysia so that Malaysian companies will become a lot more competitive. At the same time, foreign companies operating in Malaysia can then be competitive. So I believe that those are the key challenges and those are non-negotiable. And I believe that Malaysia must remain focused on those areas. Anti-competition. Our competition law was created simply because we want level playing field. You know, we don't want anti-competitive behaviors. We don't want monopolies. We don't want bid rigging. And why do we do that? It's because we want to create 
competitiveness to exist in our economy. And I do believe countries that success, successfully make it in the next many years from now will be those that are continuously creating the conditions for competitiveness to flourish. And that's what Malaysia wants to do. That's totally unnegotiable, the focus and the competitiveness.